welcome to the first episode of the Futures Functional Podcast. I am your host, Sam Waite, and this is... Ben Holden, I, my coach Ben. So we've wanted to start this podcast for so long, but it's just never been the right time, really. Uh, but we've got such an exciting year coming up, and we've met so many amazing people over the past couple of months that we thought we needed to start it now. So the reason for the podcast is we're going to get people on interviews every single week, uh, and give an insight into how the biggest people in the fitness industry travel so much, have an amazing life, but still look good and stay healthy. Yeah, I think part way through this podcast as well, we're going to be dropping some big news in, time, in terms of like what we're doing later in the year, and this is kind of a build up to that, and the, the guests along with that will be as well. So a lot of people who will be on the next couple of weeks are probably people who are working with, who are part of the team already, um, and kind of people who've got interesting stories whether it's being fitness related or lifestyle related, who are going to be on and so on, what their kind of journeys and their experience as well. Yeah, so the futurist functional means we're talking about functional style training, so it's not like your typical bodybuilder style training, it's not full on CrossFit training. A lot of the people on the podcast we're going to be getting on because they've come through exactly the same journey as us, because when we were 16 we were obsessed with bodybuilding until we were about, what would you say? Um, probably not about a year and a half two years ago maybe yeah until basically I got injured and was injured for about two years over a little stupid injury and um, I just couldn't couldn't get fixed doesn't matter how many physios I went to see how much money I spent I was just out the game and like fitness was my life was like both well, it was because you had the niggly injury and then you carried on training on it anyway so it just yeah, kind of I just kept, pushed through it. Yeah, kept pushing on top of it. But like, at the same time, like he didn't have that um, foundational background there to know like how to deal with that kind of injury either. So it was difficult because you just kind of like, oh, I can't carry on. Like a lot of people do in the gym, like a lot of people go to the gym and will have little niggly injuries and think, oh, it doesn't matter, I'll just carry on doing the same shit and make it worse and worse. Yeah, when we first started, we went to like an old school bodybuilding gym mm-hmm. and just tried to learn off everyone in there and in these big meatheads who were just lifting big heavy weights in the wrong form and we just copied them and then eventually just got injured. And But I think that's like the same with everything. Like every gym as a person, like people look up to, especially if you're a beginner, you always look up to a role model and if that role model is doing the kind of wrong things or things that not necessarily perfect and you're going to copy off doing that because there's nothing else that you know they're the personal influence for you and that's what's kind of going to set the guideline and set the path what you're going to do so if that's wrong you're pretty much stuck and and stuck with whatever else you're doing yeah so the big turning point for me was when we first found CrossFit went in there and as soon as we went in after no one knowing how to fix me no physios no one in the gym because everyone just knew how to lift weights I went in, they were just like, do this, 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 and you'll be fixed. And to be fair, within like a few weeks, I was back training and back enjoying fitness more than anything. Um, yeah, I think that that, that part helped you a lot, because I remember we used to go to the gym, didn't we, about five in the morning through um, from most last year. And even then, you were following like a, a routine, which you kind of built to build your shoulder back up more than anything, nothing for to improve you like aesthetically or even even performance based. It was it was just solely for that purpose. And I, I don't think even still then it, it kind of helped you too much it in, in terms of your shoulder. Yeah, I done so much stuff that was wasn't even worth doing. It was just like leading on to me doing the CrossFit and just actually getting people to know how to do it. If anyone if you say to anyone, I'm tightening this certain area, like I'm tightening my lat, they'll just show you an exercise. And you'll after like three goes of doing it, you'll be out. You won't be tight again. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I think I don't think you'd be looked into it too much in the first because we were like, oh, like a lot of people are. I think it's just like, oh, CrossFit shit. Like it's just <laughs> girls and it's de- after doing it, like as yeah. you know, it's definitely, definitely not. But I think I don't know why everyone has that perception. It's just like kind of like a stigma that was always around at first until people try it. But obviously, more and more now it's grown over the UK and it's something that's ma- massively benefited you and it's, it's massively benefited me and. The way that I kind of coach and speak to people as well, it's, it's helped in that regard as well and kind of help imply that into some people's programming. Yeah, like we've done fitness, tra- like fitness model training, like bodybuilding training for years and years. Mm-hmm. And unless you're going to be a fitness model, it's act- there's actually no point in it mm-hmm. because you can achieve your body goals through 
like functional style of training where you do wads and arm wraps and work on strength and performance and you just get them results from that yeah it's but it's obviously part of the journey as well it's like i said to everyone you need to enjoy that part of it and enjoy getting to the place where you want to be more than just getting there which is is the sole purpose of uh, whether it's doing like physique or bodybuilding whatever it is the sole purpose is to show up on the day and be unbelievable and the journey is just a byproduct of it like no matter how good shit whatever the time may be whereas with uh, the functional side of it it's more about focusing on the journey and then the, the byproduct just comes anyway of what you look like um, and obviously for the, I think the pivotal point for me is was when I competed and you did the whole prep period with me didn't you as well yeah. and obviously I was I was prepped by uh, Jamie Alden through that point as a lot of you probably know Grenade J um, and that was probably the most point I'd, I'd ever changed and looked the best and then realised how much I hated competing and being on stage and um, kind of not having a life for 12 or 14 weeks and you were in the exact same boat because you, you pretty much did everything apart from the show didn't you up until yeah, that point yeah literally yeah, I enjoyed it. I did. I, we enjoy training, and it's more about training as part of a, like as a pair and like with your friends and yeah. socialising. That was what we enjoyed as well as like as if well. If I'd done that on my own, I think I would have, would have slowly killed yeah, myself. Yeah, it's a lonely place when you go in a gym and you're on your own and you've got your headphones in, and everyone's looking at you like you're dead weird because you, because mm. you're doing well. You were doing massive weights, care like seventy k on the bar and that. Uh, so, I don't even think I do that now. <laughs> it's just uh, it just because that was the sole focus, there, wasn't it? Of, it was like stimulating and and what it looked like, and that was the only that was the only point of it. So I'd just turn up every single day, do what I had to do, and and go home and thought, yeah, job done. Rather job than done. Job, rather than rather than enjoying why I was being there, and and I think that's the point. Like the whole thing that comes from the CrossFit element of it is that community feel and everyone kind of being as part and everyone helping each other, which is which was different with the first time I went to a box and stuff as well was was that kind of element to it. Yeah, the other thing that I missed out massively in my training when I was training for like bodybuilding is just the intensity. <laughs> like you go in some days and because you're training and in between sets, like people people go on their phone and stuff. Like when you're doing like heavy weight, when you're heavy weights trying to build strength, you you just wait and trying to recover, putting more weight on. So there's no time to go on your phone when you're doing a wad or a workout. There's no time to go on your phone because. You can barely breathe. Never mind. I think that's the biggest, the, the biggest change of it, isn't it? And I think the more the way that you complete stuff as well. Like you go to, you used to go to the gym and think, oh yeah, I'm doing this right, and then you find out subtly <laughs> you, you're not. Yeah, you find out subtly when your shoulders hurt for two years <laughs> that you're not doing the deadlift yeah. right. Do you know the funniest story I like to tell people is how we got into the gym, and to be fair, how we even got like to be in friends. I love telling it because I love. The reaction on people's face, especially now, in what in what when I say it, I think. Well, I've obviously covered this like in a video more recently, but I've never. I don't think I've ever told anyone. I don't even think that I knew why was I started the gym until you, until we went to Manchester that time, um, and we spoke about it on the way to the car, which is, is strange. You kind of pulled out me more than anything, but the, the sole purpose of why I kind of started training was um, when I was still playing football. So it was probably about fifteen. I don't remember what I started. We were 15 and it was when the probably everyone remembers them when the night pro tops first came out and um, the ones like ronaldo and malud and that kind of thing on and um i remember one from phrase when i seen the advertisements and i got off the the morning it came out and went to the sports director my dad i wanted to get one of the first ones and um i remember taking it home as i couldn't wait to get it on because obviously at that time because i was so into football ronaldo was like the be all and end all i'd watch him all the time and he was kind of my idol um Obviously, because he's quite athletic anyway, he was he was two birds, one stone. He, he looked good and he was a yeah. football player, which is, which is what it was all about. And I remember getting home and putting it on. And I was made up when I, when I first put it on. I couldn't wait to, to get out and wear it. And I went downstairs to where my family was sitting in the front room. And the first kind of thing I heard was just someone laughing when I walked in the room. <laughs> and it's funny now when I say it. But at the time, it was like completely demoralised. And I felt like... The world's biggest. Come on, what was it? What was it? <laughs> and then all I heard was, "You look like, you look like a bag of bones in that top." And it was, I don't want to throw her under the bus now because she's my mum and I love her. She'll but, kill you. <laughs> but but she, just um, she, she was there. Who said it. But to this day now, this is why I've, I've ended up doing what I love doing now, and it's kind of pushed me down an avenue that I never thought I'd go down. It was because of that comment on that day, and that day was the first 
time I ever considered kind of starting the gym properly. And I ran back upstairs anyway, and I took the top off and threw it in the corner of my room or in the bin, and never worn it again. Because when I looked at myself in the mirror in the bathroom, that's the first time I kind of looked at myself and thought, wow, I kind of hated the way that I looked. Um, not that anyone else probably did, it was just, it was in my head then. And that's why, kind of why a lot of people are in a position of not in, kind of being in a place where they're comfortable or confident what they look like. And that was for me the starting point. And then from from there, I kind of went to the gym, started doing bits, started getting into like a bodybuilding routine. We were training together um, from, a, from a younger age and I kind of progressed into there, went into competition and then fell out of love with it and started doing, going from directly from like the bodybuilding stuff into doing like CrossFit. And then from there, I found a middle ground, which was what led into to functional fitness of kind of training the way that I wanted to, which was more performance based um, with an end goal of, of kind of hitting targets and uh, goals that I wanted to hit, but with also the elements of, of looking better and, and looking good as well, being a byproduct of it. So I kind of was able to move into that and it's something that I'm continuing doing today and something that I love doing. I know you're... Yeah, you're, it's all about that performance. Like, you want to go in the gym and just smash your workout and be and be done with it. And when you're training a performance, there's no... There's no slowing down in the middle of your workout. You just want to get that best time or get that biggest lift that you can possibly get, and that's what that's what the functional training is, isn't it? Yeah, and at it, but at the same time, it's like do we, you st- people still want to look good. Like, but yeah. people, the biggest thing is why people go to the gym is because they want to look good. So I think having that element to it, it's like I was speaking to you about the other day when we were talking about um, the performance side of it. But the biggest people in the world and the most people that are known are the people who look good as well. Like, um, do, if you say to someone about the world, who's the the world's strongest man? You probably know about. I mean, at the moment, it's probably Eddie Hall because he's UK based. But if I was to say to you, who's who would you would you remember from world's strongest man? Ah, oh, uh, Marios exactly. Kudzinovsky. Everyone said the same 100%. person because he was the world's strongest man like five five times. I think it was. But there's another guy who's like Polish, and I even I can't remember his name now. And he's won it four times. So he's not far behind, and he still competes now. But no one remembers him because Marius Podjanowski looked like a freak. It's because it's a million times like a bigger achievement because he looked he, had, he looked good. He had a six pack. He he was massive, wasn't he? Yeah. But you could still lift like stupidly heavy weights exactly. and lift ridiculous. Exactly, and it all goes back to that, that people remember those people because not only they were good performers, but they, they look well as well. And it's the same yeah. in, in other um, industries and sport as well. Obviously, Ronaldo is one of the, the the best players in the world, but look at the yeah. look at the rig on him as well. Like he's unbelievable. Yeah, and he's stupidly fit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's just got the full package, Annie. That's it. That's it. No, that's yeah. what it is. It is the full package. Is what it's all. It's all kind of about. That's what it's all towards. about. But like Ronaldo will train with that. He obviously goes out, plays ninety minutes of football. A lot of his training will be on the footy pitch. But you'll also one hundred percent do functional training to to add to the the footy training that he does to get him stronger, to get him fitter. The other reason we're starting this podcast is just to stay accountable and to keep everyone up to date with what is going on with the, my coach business, which Ben runs, and Totem business, which I run. Um, so we'll kick off now with tell everyone about what you'll be doing over the next three months, which is <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. But you thought we were even going to mention this. So um, I was obviously, I'm doing something called a manathon, and I was supposed to start the training for it one week ago, but obviously I've had a, a couple of niggly injuries, which I kind of want to get out of the way first. But the manathon is going to be an event that I'm going to complete for charity and it's going to be for the Meningitis Research Foundation. Um, I'll quickly explain what it is first and I'll explain what the reason why I'm doing it. So it's going to be a marathon which is going to take place over a 26 mile course and it is going to be a 6.5 mile tyre flip, a 6.5 mile uh, weighted vest run with chains and then a 6.5 mile log run and then a 6.5 mile Surprise finish, which we haven't kind of gone into yet, uh, of what it's going to be. So we'll leave that until possibly the day, um, and the day, yeah. The day, well, the day. We'll see. We'll see when we uh, we feel like releasing it. But that's kind of be what I'm training for for the next three months now, and I kind of laid everything out for. At the same time as completing, it, obviously, we're looking to get around a couple of places in the UK, gym wise, to do it and do a few workouts and raise a profile as much as we can for the for the charity yeah, and the cause, the cause really, yeah. And the reason why. 
we picked the meningitis research foundation was because I fell in love with meningitis seven years ago and uh, kind, of, kind of went through a trauma and go into it massively um, but nearly died from it because I was in a coma for like a week and that's why we've kind of picked that cause and they're the kind of reason why I'm still alive and here today so that's why we, we were supporting and giving back to that that charity that kind of helped me through that period and secondly the reason why we picked that challenge is because it's all about our ethos of, of functional fitness and I want to try and push my body to the extreme and see what it can achieve in that period of time. Um, like we speak about before, like people often have that kind of misconception that oh, you do loads of cardio, you do loads of conditioning work, that you're going to um, kind of lose tissue or lose muscle or going to be skinny when this is what we kind of want to prove it isn't. And if we can get as many people doing the marathon as we, as we, as we wanted to, to kind of achieve during that period. It's getting more bums off seats and getting more people into fitness in a different yeah. way. Um, and that's kind of why we put that, that document together, which is kind of, if people want to, they'll, they'll be able to download somewhere over the next couple of weeks, which is a scaled down version of the Manifon. So by all means, have a, have a go with the mini Manifon series that we put together, which is a kind of scaled down version of the training that I'm going to be doing. Put the link below uh, and we'll put the Just Given page as well. Yeah, yeah, the Just Given page as well. It'd be great if anyone can kind of give towards the... Yeah, the foundation. Yeah. So the other reason we decided on the marathon was like every single day, Ben promotes to his clients about the style of like flexible dieting and functional fitness. So we just wanted him to do something that was so like ridiculously extreme version of functional fitness and flexible dieting. And at the end, people can have opinions of it, but at the end, he will look better than he looks now. It'll be bigger, stronger, fitter, and it'll be because he's ran a marathon, basically. And by the way, it obviously wasn't me who put who, who set the elements of it together because the person who did didn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it. That was. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing it and just doing something different, to be honest, as well, over the the next couple of weeks and months. And it's all for it's all for a good cause. So yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so everyone start giving some money on the just giving page. <laughs> well, yeah. More importantly, have a go of it yourself and and post something about it on social media because I think that's the main thing is we get the awareness up of of the challenge and the, the journey um, and get more people more people yeah. on it. We're gonna be do- we're gonna be hosting some events as well, aren't we? Be- like based around um, the marathon challenge in empowered fit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we done a deadlift party there the other day yeah. where basically it was the same thing, just promoting that functional fitness. But it was how many bars was it? It uh, was six or seven, I think. It six was. or seven bars. We had sixty k, a hundred k, hundred and forty, hundred and eighty, two hundred, two twenty, two forty. Yeah. And each bar had different points, and you have five minutes to get just as many points on a board as you can. Mm-hmm. And Ash, Ash won it, didn't he? Yeah, with some ridiculous, name, it? <laughs> ridiculous score, which be powerlifters and everything, yeah, didn't yeah. it? But it was, it was good as well because the mixture of people that came was amazing. Like you had some strong men there, some crossfitters, um, some bodybuilders, some regular gym goers. So it was nice to have that mixture there, which is what functional fitness is all about as well, is that mixture of, mm. of people. Um, and it's the same what like Empowered Fit stands for, which is amazing gym that we both hmm. train at now. And there's there's a nice mixture of people and that family element feel to it. Yeah, exactly. uh, and they stand for that same brand ethos that we stand for, of functional fitness as well, which is is really nice. Yeah. So the other the other side of the business is Totem, and one of the more exciting things that we launched the podcast for is because we're going to be going to Body Power this year. This is the first time we're really telling anyone about it and uh, we're also sponsoring the body power games body power which will be games, yeah. unbelievable uh can't wait it's literally the most exciting well, it's thing a, it's, a, it's like all child of dreams the first time we went to body power it was years and years and years ago like one of the first ones and um, we must have been youngish then when we went you know like yeah, teens or whatever remember, yeah and from there we just kind of overwhelmed by it all and it was like the big dream to to come back one day wasn't it and even when i competed there it was still kind of the dream yeah, then so yeah. we'd always do it and this year, 2018, is, is the year it's that the it year, all comes yeah. through. Yeah, it's so exciting because like, when we first started the business, we were just sitting on my bed and we were just talking about what we want to do with it and literally Body Power was one of the big goals for it, mm. wasn't it? We've got loads of stuff leading up before Body Power to, to get people excited for our stand up Body Power. We're going to be bringing something which is like ridiculously different than what yeah, anyone definitely. else's, what else is anyone else, whatever anyone else has done. Mm. 
Uh, and yeah, we're just so excited. Got a few good good things. Haven't we? Yeah, there's a few good people are going to be there as well. And what we're working with, uh, our body po- our body power is going to be exciting, uh, exciting time and a stressful time as well. I'm sure, sure building up to it. Oh, sure, be fine. We've got like five months, haven't we? <laughs> like five months before we have to do it. So yeah, it should be good. No, it's exciting. It's literally the childhood dream, isn't it? Yeah, I think it, I think that'd be good. That element of it as well is um, the body power games as well. Um, which will be really exciting and jug- yeah. jug- kind of juggling between the, the two of them and um, looking over at some of the teams that because we'll be putting teams and onto uh, the uh, team into the the games as well the token teams so it'd be good kind of watching them and see how they do within the competition aspect of it as well. Yeah, body part games we want to be as big as possible this year because it was quite big last year, wasn't it? But we want it to be we want to do as much as we can. But that's exactly, just raise the profile of what it is. That's exactly what we've been talking about in terms of how we've changed and how mm. a lot of the industry has changed in terms of it was solely a bodybuilding event. You would never you if you said seven years ago, whatever it is, that CrossFit they're gonna have a CrossFit stuff there, you would have told me to yeah, get yeah. off, yeah. Yeah. So that's even shown like how, how much of an impact it's having now. Um with it being a body power, which is like the biggest UK event. Yeah, we want to make it as big as possible as well, because like, even if you look at our athletes like Mike Palmer and Simon, when you look at them, they look like fitness models. My, well, they, they both look like freaks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're ridiculous. <laughs> so that, that, in a good way. And they'll be on the bar doing muscle-ups and doing as many pull-ups as you can as you can count. And they still look unbelievable. And all yeah, these you, fitness, you think he'd be on men's elves or something? Yeah, like that. all these fitness models walking past, looking at them, going... How is that hundred k guy just flying up that bar, <laughs> flying up on top of that bar, and then he's going and doing a stupidly big snatch or mm. a stupidly big uh, cleaning jerk? So yeah, it's just a full package, and that's what we want to promote and just turn heads. Mm-hmm. That's the get. That's the goal, isn't it? Just yeah, to the, turn expe- heads. the experience, the experience, and having having a good time more than anything. Exactly. Rather yeah. than just going there to, to kind of set up camp. So yeah, that's a, that's the big that's the big one this year, and it's the first time we've talked about it. So. Um, more will kind yeah, of unfold as, as, now, as, yeah. as we go through and, and more people will kind of be involved with which is the exciting part of it over the next couple of months in the build up to it which will be amazing as well to finish up and kind of round up on our first podcast um, we want to leave people with something they can take away from the podcast at the end of every single one so we're going to be having a couple more guests as we go on, go on over the next few weeks that we've got lined up and basically at the end of each podcast there will be either like a link or a PDF that someone can you can follow along and click on, um, and it will be a workout that has been kind of put together. Yeah, yeah, it'll be the it'll be the guests' favorite workout that might be that they've done this year, might be that they've done last year, or might be their favorite workout ever. So you'll get like a load of different different styles. Some might be more bodybuilding, some might be more CrossFit. Like one might be from you from the marathon. Yeah, well, uh, just just a total mix, and just for you to try something new. And just see what works for you, what you like, because everyone trains one way, and we want to try and give people that exposure to train to what suits them, not just what they think is the norm. Mm-hmm. Try different stuff. I think for, for some of the people that are on as well, some of the guests that we've got on the next couple of weeks, and some of the workouts that they're probably put together, you might want to like have a, a care package and for afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're only doing one workout that week. Yeah. <laughs> some of them are going to be extreme. Um, but I think it just it gives you something to kind of have a go of and something different. So even if you download it and try it that week, um, and it's not quite your thing or you don't enjoy it, there'll be other weeks where they'll kind of be releasing other stuff and there'll be different kinds of guests on who'll be who leaving something with their mark to have a go of and something that they yeah. really enjoy doing as well. Okay. Uh, I think that's kind of what it's all about is trying and being and being versatile and various of stuff. Yeah. So our next podcast, uh, you'll find it on Instagram Live next Wednesday. So we'll be doing Instagram Live. Is that that is the uncut version, and then it will be uploaded on the Sunday, and that'll be the cut version. So if you want to see who our new guest is first, and get the uncut cut version, get on Instagram Live. But if not, listen when listen Sunday. And that's uh, I guess that's over now from us for the first yeah. the first episode. Sweet.